I'd like to welcome each one of you to our devotional study today. I invite you to take your Bibles, turn with me if you would, to 1 Timothy chapter 4. As we come into 1 Timothy chapter 4, we find that Paul deals with the pastor and apostasy and how pastors are to deal in an age of apostasy and counteract apostasy in this world that we live in. Considerable space is given to the apost to apostasy in the pastoral epistles as well as elsewhere in the New Testament. And because of the apostasy, a great responsibility is upon the pastor to properly instruct the members of the church. We do not want people being caught up in apostasy. And as a result of that, they need to be properly trained in the Word of God. 2 Timothy 2.15 is going to instruct us, Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of Truth. And if somebody is not going to be swallowed up by apostasy or fall into apostasy, it is of utmost necessity that they be a mature believer who knows how to rightly develop or rightly uh, divide, rather, the word of truth. So let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 4 and let's read the first five verses and we'll begin to look at those verses today. It says in 1 Timothy 4, 1, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created, to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer." So as we come into these verses, we find here that apostasy is predicted. That Paul says to Timothy here, you need to know this, you need to understand this, that in the last days, some are going to depart from the truth. And he gives us the characteristics of the age of apostasy. And as we look at these verses and we see the evidences and the characteristics that Paul tells Timothy here regarding this age of apostasy, it becomes very clear to us that Paul is talking about this age that we're living in. There has always been apostates, but certainly in this age that we live in, apostasy has grown. And uh, we see that all around us. And in verses 1 and 2, he talks about demonism and doctrinal error. And he tells us very clearly here that the Spirit speaks expressly of this error, that we should not be surprised about what is happening in our world today, about what is going on, because the Holy Spirit of God told us 2,000 years ago, basically, in this passage, exactly what was going to take place. And he says here in verse 1, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. This is very clearly told to us that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So he tells us here, first of all, the time of the apostasy, that it will be in the latter times. And uh, as we look at that phrase, the latter times, uh, we understand that we are living in those latter times today. As we see what's going on around us and the indications that the Bible gives to us regarding the end of the age, we know very clearly that as a child of God, that we need to lift up our heads for our redemption draweth nigh. And not only does he tell us the time of the apostasy, that it is the latter times, but he also gives us the nature of the apostasy, and that is that some would depart from the faith. It says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So as we come into this passage, we see here that the Bible makes it very clear to us that people would depart from the faith. That faith that was once delivered to the saints. We need to keep in mind that over 2,000 years, the teachings of Scripture has not changed. What we are to believe as the people of God has not changed. What our mandate is as a New Testament church has not changed. All of these things are the same, but yet at the same time, people will depart from that. And they will say, well, we need to be more relevant in our society or whatever it is. But they use that as an excuse to depart from the faith. Jude said this in Jude chapter 1 in verse 3. 
It says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered to the saints. So he reminds us here that this faith was once delivered to the saints. Once for all, this message has been delivered and it's never going to change. God has not changed his mind, nor will he change his mind on what we need to stand for as the people of God. So he says here that he's reminding them that they need to earnestly contend for that which was once delivered to the saints. And, and we see here that the reason for that is because of the apostasy that will be taking place in this world. And then back in 1 Timothy chapter 4, we see here the nature, or we see the source of this doctrine, and that very simply is seducing spirits, that there are those who will seek to lead people away from the truth. 1 Timothy 4, 1, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. As we think about this idea of seducing spirits, let me just take you to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 for a moment. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 7. It says this, it says, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he is taken out of the way. Many times we look at the last part of that verse, he who now letteth will let until he is taken out of the way. And we're not going to deal with that in detail. If you want to know more, you need to go to our YouTube page and uh, there you'll find a playlist on Second Thessalonians, and you can see where I've already dealt with these verses in a previous devotional. But what I want you to see is this. It says, the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Friends, that mystery of iniquity is at work in our world today. And these doctrines of devils, um, these seducing spirits are seeking to lead people away from the truth of the word of God. And quite honestly, Satan does not care what you believe as long as it does not fall in line with the word of God. And we should not be deceived. We need to study the word of God so that we know what it says so that we're not deceived by these seducing spirits. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, and in verses 13 through 15, it says this, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is of no great thing if his members, ministers rather, also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works." So there are those all around, the demons even, Satan himself seeks to transform himself as an angel of light to bring him to bring people to the place where they believe that the lies that he is proclaiming is actually the truth. Keith L. Brooks says Satan is a theologian and makes use of demons in the last days to lead many away into apostasy. And uh, can I say that he's not only at work amongst cults today, but sadly, he is at work in churches as well. And he is doing all that he can to distract us from the mandate that God has given to us. And that is to go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature, and then baptize and disciple those people and establish churches. That's the New Testament mandate. That's what God has given to us. And sadly, we're living in a day and age where many Christians have lost sight of what it is that God has called us to do. But not only is there a seducing spirit, but then also we see the apostate doctrine and the doctrines of devils. Back in first uh Timothy chapter four, verse one, now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Uh as we think about these doctrines of devils, Second Corinthians chapter eleven and verse three has this to say it says, But I fear lest by any means, as a serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. We need to be very careful that we do not go away from the doctrine of the Word of God. We need to make sure that what we believe is based on the Word of God, not just simply because somebody told it to us, and, but, and, or it was in a doctrinal statement, but study the Word of God and make sure that what you believe is found in the Word of God. 1 John 4, verses 1 through 6. Let me read this as we close today. It says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. 
And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now already is it in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that, he that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So there we see this doctrines of devils that's gone out into our world. Let's be careful in this age of apostasy that what we believe is based on the word of God and that we allow the Holy Spirit of God to be our teacher. Have a great day.